In order to use streamers effectively, you have to have the right equipment. There's special rods, special lines that you have to use, and even the leaders are specific to this type of streamer fishing. Have a look at this. It'll explain a lot to you about the rigging system you need to use big streamers to catch big fish. There are several rigging options for streamer fishing depending upon conditions. Based on the depth and where in the water column you need to put your fly will help determine the type of fly line, pattern, and leader setup you will require. In terms of matching the leader to the fly line, it is quite common for anglers to make mistakes in the appropriate leader length required. Here are some options you should consider. When using smaller streamers such as muddler minnows and Thunder Creek style patterns, most anglers will use a floating line. This will help you effectively fish a depth of 1 to 4 feet at most. A leader of 7 to 9 feet in length is ideal for this type of presentation. If you require more depth or particular action on your fly, then you add a split shot 6 to 12 inches ahead of your streamer. There you are. If you're using patterns such as bead-headed woolly buggers combined with an intermediate fly line, then you can shorten your leader to 6 to 8 feet in length and also increase the strength of your tippet. This shorter leader will give you tighter control of your fly for both casting and in the water in terms of presentation. Get him in this quiet water here and we'll net him. He looks like a decent fish. How's he feel? I haven't seen him yet. And he's not too big. He's not huge, but he's a decent fish. Oh yeah. Looks okay. like a brownie. Is that what it is? Yep. Nice brown. He took it on the second or third strip. Get him up and we'll... There we go. There go. Nice brown trout. That's yeah, uh, a nice 13 inch fish or so. Nice fish. That's a good way to start the day. Yeah. We're getting to that good water. Look at that nice undercut bank over there. So I know. We'll, this prime territory. Isn't oh, it? it's prime. Nice pretty marks on them. Nice wild fish too. Yeah. Nice brownie. Beautiful? Let's get them back in there. There we go. Nice. That's what it's all about. There he goes. There he goes. All right. That was hey. great. Good deal. Usually you'll be imparting a lot of action on this type of streamer setup, so fish don't have time to examine your offering before making a decision whether to strike or not. This obviously allows you to increase your tippet diameter without sacrificing possible strikes. The only exception to this type of presentation is on lake systems or other still waters where you might want to slow down your presentation. If water conditions are clear, then you might need to consider using lighter tippets to ensure your strike ratio continues to be high. For using full-size streamers, such as large strip leeches or zonkers, in combination with sink tip or full sinking lines, then your leader needs to only be 30 to 40 inches long. Your presentation is usually fast and often erratic, trying to key in on predatory triggers. The sink tip and full sinking lines help you get your streamers down fast in the water column and the short leader provides good control and also ensures that the fly is in the strike zone. It is critical to understand how and why trout become big. Certainly they learn how to avoid predators such as eagles, fishers, and even their own species. But the fundamental change is their diet. Juvenile trout are usually invertebrate feeders. However, by the time they reach a size between 12 and 16 inches, they have begun a shift in their principal food source from invertebrates to flesh. The reasoning is quite logical. Their growing bodies demand more nourishment than is usually available in your atypical ecosystem. So they begin to predate on baitfish, sculpin, darters, and even their own species. This is not to say that big trout do not continue to eat insects. They do. In fact, they often dominate the best feeding lies where they can easily ingest large quantities of invertebrates with minimal expenditure of energy. This is one of the benefits of being at the top of the food chain. Additionally, in some tailwater systems, large trout don't have to hunt for other fish as often since there is such an abundance of other forage such as freshwater shrimp which helps them grow. A good example is the White River in Arkansas. However, the fundamental reality is that big trout rarely feed on the surface because they don't want to expend the energy or expose themselves to predators, which explains why so few truly large trout are caught on dry flies. To consistently catch trophy trout in most systems, you have to use streamers because their principal source of nourishment comes from hunting, killing, and eating other fish. 
One of the main sources of prey for big trout in river systems throughout North America is sculpin. Sculpin are a rarely seen species that hide during the day and come out at night to feed. They seem to be much like chameleons because they readily change the coloration to match the local bottom. Which is why brown, olive and black are usually the best colors to use. Patterns such as zoo cougars, bushy woolly buggers, strip leeches and kiwi muddlers are excellent because they resemble the silhouette of a sculpin. Sculpin do not possess swim bladders typical of most fish, which is why they stick close to the bottom. The pattern you must use must be on or near the bottom when retrieved in order to realistically imitate this favorite prey fish of big trout. Silhouette and color are your two key elements when choosing streamer patterns. Based on local forage, fly fishers should pick flies that roughly resemble the outline, action, and color of primary prey such as sculpin. Predator, even though the fish may not be hungry, he can't stop that, that triggering mechanism that says in his brain, I have to defend my territory. So what we did is uh, we thought, well, if we could get the fish, if we could get a fish, and we often refer back to like uh, instincts of bears and things like that, because there's, you know, bears maul people often, but they don't really eat people all that often as a food thing. You simply intruded on the bear's uh, territory and you pay the price. He swats you around. The same thing is what we're trying to, and all predators being the same, cats will do it, you know, dogs will do it, anything that you come into their territory, they'll respond. And seeing how the, the trout is the biggest predator in the system, we decided that it wasn't likely you could take a traditional gray ghost, for example, and elicit a response from that big fish. Conversely, if you take a fly that maybe is five, six inches long and you splat it down in the water and then you try to escape, and that's the key. That's why we use such fast retrieves and why we hit the fly hard and we fish very aggressively. We're trying to elicit a predatory instinct in the fish that this little tiny gray ghost, although it's a great fly and it's a great searching fly for juvenile fish, the likelihood of a big carnivore-sized trout eating this as a territorial response isn't nearly as great as it would be to something like this or the, you know, the bigger uh, zoo cougars and things like that that we fish. And that's why we run through the river as fast as we do. We're simply looking to offend a few fish, the bigger predatory fish, and get a response from them. We're not necessarily looking for the hungry fish. Now if you've got a hungry fish, you know, you invade his territory and he's hungry, that's just about a guaranteed in a hookup. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to get all of our weekly uploads.